Yo, what's good, Hot Peppers? Some of you guys are using the wrong settings on Vanguard and losing a lot of frames. And unfortunately, sometimes it's going to be looking a little clunky or a little choppy or whatever. And I'm here to help you guys maximize your GPUs, your settings, all that for on Vanguard. So without further ado, I've got to be honest, I do not use keyboard and mouse settings. I don't think I would recommend any keyboard and mouse. If you want to have keyboard and mouse settings, you just look up for a different video for that. But I'm going to go straight into the graphics side of things. A display, I rock on full screen for the best input because if you're on a full screen borderless it will have a little bit of an input delay even though i know if you guys are on a single pc full screen borderless is really nice if you want to tab out but if you want to have the best input delay then for sure have on full screen i rock on 1080p i use a 240 hertz monitor uh do you want to have your v-sync off and then your frame rate limit to custom i have mine at 335 uh 60 and 30. now you can keep it unlimited if you guys like to see how many frames you can actually get with your gpu uh, but i just keep it on custom i try not to go overboard with the 335 uh custom frame limit aspect ratio just keep it automatic Does really matter too much your brightness should be at 50 you don't want to have your brightness too high because it's going to make your screen all washed out and honestly in my opinion i feel like it kind of just makes it hard to see in general if you just put too much brightness and if you feel like your screen is dark you might want to take off the hdr uh, and also keep your display gamma at 2.2 focus mode i have it on off i feel like that just kind of makes the screen a little bit distracting also if you guys want to increase your brightness you can just simply do it on your monitor kind of save yourself from your own gameplay through the recording and not make it so disturbing for other viewers and then your on-demand texture streaming so this helps out with packet bursts um i know some of you guys probably still have that issue even though you turn off on demand texture streaming but personally i found that it helped me by a lot sometimes i get it here and there depending on who i'm connected to but for the most part this does help out quite a lot all right so now on to the quality um, I have quality preset to custom here. And if we go down, my texture resolution, medium, medium, particle quality level, very low, particle resolution on high. So it kind of keeps a balance between the, the particle quality not being too disturbing and looking all, all pixelated or Minecraft blocks in game. I'll actually show you guys in game right now. All right, guys. So we're on the map Red Star here. And as you can see, the uh, particle quality on this like fire or whatever, it looks all like blocky, you know, all pixelated. And that's because we have the settings on low uh, particle resolution here if we turn it to high and we apply it now it doesn't look too uh pixelated right it looks kind of smooth by getting roughly around the same frames and also guys make sure you update your drivers as well on your gpu so yeah so also it uh, helps out uh, being able to see the snow through like maps like red star bullet impact sprays i keep it on even though it's not really needed because like you're not gonna be trying to find like oh whether enemy shot or whatever but i just keep it on just because shared equality you want that on low tessellation you want that on off level of detail distance range so i would recommend having it on standard but if your gpu can can handle long by all means go for it if you want to improve the quality of your gameplay nearby level of detail and distance i have it on high i've noticed that it doesn't really mess with the frames it just simply increases the quality of your gameplay uh clutter draw distance on low volumetric quality level on low as well basically sending the lighting or fog and cloud to low it doesn't really make that much of a difference and then for your screen space shadows have it on off shadow map resolution very low i'm pretty sure you guys don't really care too much about the shadow map resolution and then sun shadow cascades low cash sun and spot shadows both on spot cash size low spot shadow quality on low particle lighting low ambient occlusion you want to have on on off and then press square or just show more and then have your GTAO quality on low and then screen space reflection on off and then this is where I find the quality of gameplay and also the higher FPS very interesting so if you have a 1080p monitor I would highly recommend rocking Nvidia DLSS on performance and then hit show more DLSS sharpness you want to max that out to 100 now this improves the quality of your gameplay and also you get more frames about 20 extra frames than having your anti-aliasing enabled if you do have it enabled let's say if you are on a 1440p monitor I noticed a lot of people recommend this you want to turn on your fidelity cast to on show more make sure you have the cast strength to 1.0 and then you want to change your anti-aliasing from filmic to smaa to T2X and your anti-aliasing quality quality to low. So what this does is it takes away 20 frames. If you're on a 1440p monitor, it increases the quality of your gameplay. Personally, for me, I can see just fine when I have my video DLSS on performance and the maximum sharpness. It looks really good to me. But again, if you're willing to risk 20 frames, by all means, go for it. All right, guys. So I hopped in the game here to show you guys the difference between the fidelity cast and the performance NVIDIA DLSS between the quality and the frame difference. We take a look at the frames, it's about 200, eh, about 220 roughly. And 
and the quality is insane right but if you were to change it back to performance so let's say you take off the fidelity cast you go on performance and you maximize the sharpness to 100 apply that right notice on the increase on the frames i mean it's not that much but it's actually like 20 to 30 frames if that matters to you um and you set right here i can see like pretty clearly um, all the way over there to this tree by this wall that head glitch i can see just fine but notice how my frames is about like 240 to almost 250 roughly me just like looking over there depending on if you have a 1440p monitor or 1080p i think if you have a 1080p probably like you want to keep it on performance and if you have 1440p then definitely you want to make sure that you take advantage of um the fidelity cast so depth of field i have it on off you don't want to have that blur you want to make sure you can see as much as possible your vram users have it on 90 percent if you feel like you're dropping frames or whatever or kind of getting like some stutters uh drop it back to 85 percent but i have it on 90 percent it works fine for me so also keep in mind i have a 3080 in, uh, nvidia graphics card so uh so now for gameplay uh, your field of view i personally have it on 120 that's what i feel comfortable with i like having that uh the wide angle of where i'll be able to see at my ads field of view is on independent now if you're a sniper like myself this doesn't really matter too much in this game um however on cold war i used to have it on affected so i just been rocking out with independent and i've been kind of just chilling with that uh i might change it later on though so we'll see camera movement you want to make sure that you do not have it on 100 you want it on 50 percent to loosen up all the shakes and make sure it's kind of like a little bit smoother uh for motion blur both of them off you do not want to have that on and also having it off increases your frames having them on just lowers the frame so you want it off and then nvidia reflex low latency i've noticed that on plus boost makes it pretty stuttery um i noticed that a lot of people been rocking on on so that's what i recommend and then for audio i just kind of rock out with this you can kind of adjust your audio to whatever you feel comfortable with um i think that my audio makes you be on headphones not on night mode i'm not too sure why i heard that in night mode helps out with footsteps but i feel like the game still needs to or the developers still need to fix that sound effects volume hit market volume 75 kill string music off i just don't like that i don't know i don't like any type of music from the game i just like to play my own music off elgato uh, also, I use a dual PC setup, so this is what I kind of just have set up here. When I push this talk, I'll just keep scrolling, and yeah, that's pretty much my audio stuff. And then for the interface, this is what I have as well. Again, adjust to these settings to whatever you feel comfortable with. I like to just show my FPS, my latency. Um, I took off my GPU temperature because it was basically the same thing the whole entire time. And yeah, that's pretty much it right there, man. And then for controller. Okay, so now I changed a few things. I'm not gonna lie. So for my sensitivity, I use 2020. Obviously, you want to use whatever sensitivity you feel comfortable with. And for settings video, we'll cover that in some time in the future. Um, these I just keep one custom sensitivity per zoom. This is amazing. I'm so glad that they added this. Um, I personally have it off. Like I don't really like to mess with that. Um, and then I play on with my bumpers, tactical flipped, standard, standard, aim response, curve tie, linear, kind of keep it the same as modern warfare and on cold war controller vibration off helps you out with like, you know, just your aim, whatever off, off, whatever instance, uh, I play on default, uh, my trigger input dead zone, both on zero, and then my left stick minimum input dead zone is on zero, and then my right stick input dead zone is on six. So that's pretty much the same thing as what I had in Cold War, and it works perfectly fine for me personally. Now, if you go over to gameplay, hit the target aim assist mode, I was rocking focusing for a little while in this game, and then I realized I felt like I just had no control on my aim that much. I felt like the aim assist was trying too hard to try to go against what I was trying to do, so I kept it on precision. Um, precision is best. I mean, if, if you've been rocking precision since Cold War, that's probably your best option. ADS aim assist on as, as well. ADS plus melee with, for weapon mount activation, um, and then weapon mount exit. Um, and along depleted ammo switch on blind fire on so this right here this helps out with sliding so i know a lot of people have mentioned that the sliding kind of feels a little bit off in this game so you want to keep it on partial and then have grounded mantle and automatic ground mantle both on off and you feel a big big difference i didn't have it on i got my ass whooping an attorney so but that's a different story mantle stands queuing on automatic tactical sprint on i personally feel like it you need to be able to run pretty quickly in this game to get to the enemy spawn off off sprinting door da bash on slide behavior tap I find that most essential. ADS site behavior on hold. Equipment behavior on hold as well. Kind of keep it the same as, you know, the previous Call of Duties. Um, I use tap to reload. If you're playing Warzone, tap to interact would probably be best. But, you know, this is just Vanguard. And yeah, that's pretty much the rest of the settings. Before you guys click off, you want to make sure that you go to your NVIDIA control panel and click on manage 3D settings. So to get to NVIDIA control panel, right click on the desktop, hit NVIDIA control panel, and then go over to manage 3D settings. If you're on a Radeon graphics card or, you know, AMD graphics card, it'd probably be looking different for you. But for NVIDIA stuff, 
you guys want to go ahead and copy this by all means go ahead um these obviously can increase your frames from like 30 to 50 if not maybe 100 if even i had a friend od tech he helped me out with these uh, video control panel settings so if you guys want to just pause the video at any given time by all means go for it i'm just gonna keep scrolling here um i have changed a few things um, from the black ops cold War videos it's just optimized for vanguard and yes i do record on a obs studio over here with the replay buffer on it only takes away probably like 10 frames but i just do this to be able to get 120 fps clips if you guys want me to make a video for that i could definitely make that um it's gonna be on my second channel though if you guys want to subscribe to that it'll probably be in the link down below in the description or probably a card on the top right of the screen but i hope you guys found this video super helpful if you guys haven't done so already be sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you guys are new with the notifications on to be informed with the number one source of call of duty summon content on youtube